Hi, I'm Willem Kuyken. I'm the Rip Lab Professor of Mindfulness and Psychological Science at the University of Oxford. I'm also the principal investigator of the Myriad study. Science is a team sport, and within any science there is usually a group of people working together, each with their own roles. The role of the principal investigator is the person who has the overall responsibility for the project, who secures the funding, has oversight of the project, and appoints the team to deliver the project and towards the end of the project takes responsibility for making sure it's written up and disseminated in a good way. The Myriad project has a very clear question and with any scientific project spending time being clear, articulating if you like a good question is absolutely key. It's fundamental in fact. Everything follows much better if you've got a good question. And our question, and it's seven years of work, our question is can we find a way of um, promoting young people's resilience so that that supports their mental health and well-being in school, but actually throughout their whole lives. And what we're doing is we're doing that through a program of work called mindfulness training. Within the project, we have a number of different elements, but the biggest element is a randomized controlled trial in which we are comparing mindfulness training with what happens normally in schools to see whether or not when people do the mindfulness training, they develop resilience and we see improvements in their mental health and well-being over a two-year period and indeed into the rest of their lives. So what is mindfulness? Well, mindfulness is a word that's been, or an idea that's been around for thousands of years, but it's essentially about a, a way of seeing the world and being in the world that is about being present with attention and non-judgmental awareness. It's a sort of kindly interest. It's a sort of interest and curiosity that isn't about analyzing the past, worrying about the future, but really engaging with life in a very present moment, friendly and engaged way. It's a seven-year program of work, and we're asking a whole range of other questions as well. One of the key questions we're asking is, do schools themselves actually, the culture of schools, for example, support the mental health and well-being of young people, and does that change over time? We're also asking about not just the young people, but the teachers as well. What's the mental health and well-being of teachers in UK schools like? And are there factors that make teachers have better mental health and well-being? And what can we do to support teachers to have better mental health and well-being? We're also asking about how does mindfulness work? So trying to unpack um, mindfulness training and saying, what are the mechanisms, if you like, or the routes through which mindfulness might improve well-being and uh, mental health? And we have this idea that it's about attention and executive control. So that when we are distracted, and distracted sometimes by quite powerful distractors, like a sort of a very um, socially important or emotionally salient um, thing, can we see that happening and bring our attention back to what we're trying to focus on at the moment? So it might be something that's happening on social media, or it might be a, a relationship problem that we're having. Can we see the mind getting caught by that? And can we bring it back? So we're asking, how does mindfulness training um, work? The other thing we're asking about at a much kind of bigger level, if you like, is um, if we find that this uh, approach works, what's the best way of introducing to that to schools? How can it be implemented? How can it be scaled? Doing something like this is not easy. Um, what are the things that facilitate mindfulness training in schools? What are the things that get in the way of um, mindfulness training in schools? So that's a whole other set of questions um, that we're asking. One of the things that's really, I think, important to remember about science is that science actually has an aim. It has an intention. What we're trying to do is create knowledge that will improve the world, um, that will improve people's lives, and this project is no different. If we have positive findings from this uh, study, what we hope is that that will influence policymakers. They'll look at the results of the study and say, that's something that we should be doing in our education sector, in our country. Um, head teachers, senior leadership teams, what we hope is that they will say, oh, that's interesting, and that's something that can actually inform the way that we practice within our schools. And finally, what we hope is that other scientists will read the work that we've done and go, ah, oh, that's posed some new questions and left some unanswered questions, and they'll take those questions forwards in the next stage of science.